Hello Drummers and Other Creatures. In this video we're going to look at how we can use paradiddles to improve our facility with ghost notes and getting the balance right between the ghost notes and the more accented notes that we use on the backbeats. We're looking at this in the context of a groove played between the hands on the hi-hat and the snare or the ride and the snare, whatever you like. And uh, we're going to use the single paradiddle, which is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, as I'm sure most of you know. We're going to play also, the three permutations of that pattern as per right hand lead, we've got inverted paradiddle, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. We have the diddles at the start, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. And finally, we have the overlapping diddles, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. And it's probably a good idea to have at least a reasonable working familiarity with these patterns to make these exercises work for you. But you can kind of get stuck into this and um, if anything, uh, you know, gets a little bit sticky, you can just go away and practice the patterns a little bit more and uh, then you'll be able to put it together. So what am I talking about? Let's have a quick demo of how I'm going to play paradiddle grooves and uh, after that I shall explain the method to the madness. There you go, something like that, more or less. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is playing each individual pattern on the snare drum uh, with the accents that work for this exercise. And uh, in this case, we're going to always accentuate the first, uh, the first note of a group of 16s. Basically, so we're going to be playing the paradiddle as uh, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, one E and a, two E and a, and so on, right? So the paradiddles are sixteens. We're going to accentuate the quarter notes, the one, two, three, and four of our beat. So first things first, obviously, the single paradiddle. No surprises there. Next, we're going to play the inverted paradiddle, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. And again, I'm going to accentuate the first note of each group of four, like this. The next pattern, the diddles at the start, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. This is a little bit more challenging because where with the first two patterns, I'm playing my accent as part of the single stroke element of the paradiddle, the right of the right left, or the left of the left right, if you like. Um, now we're playing the first of a group of two notes, the first of a group of doubles or diddles as an accent. So I'm playing accent and then soft note in quick succession. So we have this. Right hand. Left hand. Oh, I repressed that this, okay? So that's a little bit more challenging. You've got right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. A little bit more challenging. The one that I personally find most challenging is the overlapping diddles. In the overlapping diddles, I have to play a double with the first note quiet and the second one loud. And this is something I believe is widely known as a pullout, where I'm going to go soft loud. And that's quite hard. I find it hard anyway. Tricky, challenging, don't say hard. So it goes like this. And there's a whole art of how we control the movement between louder and softer notes, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video. Um, I have covered it elsewhere. But 
I would work on each one of those patterns individually. Once you know how to play each one, you are ready to transfer it to the kit between, well, we're going to just go on the hi-hat and snare for today. And what we're going to change is that we're, we're not going to go out of our way to accent the notes on the hi-hat. So when I play this in the context of a groove, I'm going to go... I'm just going to play right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left to start with. I'm just going to accent that left. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. We've got a nice little exercise there where we have three ghost notes and a loud one in every bar. Am I right? No, you've got that three ghost notes. No, ah, six ghost notes and two loud ones in every bar, actually. Counting was never my strong point. Maybe that's why I insist on doing it when I'm drumming. Now I have a temptation to accent the hi-hat as well. Uh, if you want to do that, there's nothing wrong with it really. But that's also fine. When you know that you can play that reasonably well, add the bass drum in and you can just put the bass drum wherever it feels natural, do whatever's easiest at first and then play a little bit as a groove. and there you have a nice ghost note pattern to work on. Play it really slowly and concentrate on the, the, the relative heights of the stick. When you're playing your ghost notes, you want the stick to move a few centimeters from the drum at most, two or three centimeters, as, as lightly as you can. Watch any video of Bernard Purdy playing and you'll get the idea, or Porcaro uh, for another thing. Um, nice soft ghost notes and then you can pick the stick up a little bit more to give a nice strong backbeat okay and that's that as you practice this you'll be able to play more complex bass drum patterns uh, and if you want you could write it out and give yourself some uh, variations that way if you're comfortable with reading um, once you've played it slowly and, and carefully you can then speed it up a little bit and see what you get Nice. The next one is the inverted paradiddle. And the mechanics of the accent in relation to the ghost note are pretty much the same. So it shouldn't really feel that different to play once you got used to the pattern. So right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. Let's put the bass in. Play it nice and slowly. When you've got the hang of that, you may speed it up and see what you get and see if you can keep those nice balanced ghost notes sounding as soft as you can, balanced against the louder backbeats, the two and the four, which is nice and snappy. Cool, so those two patterns are fairly straightforward. Now, we're gonna play the diddles at the start pattern, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. And for this one, as I said, you've now got the challenge of playing an accent followed by a softer note. And so it goes like this. Now, whether or not you use this exact pattern, um, you'll find that the control that that helps you develop in getting the contrast between the loud and then the soft played in quick succession is super useful. Uh, I mean, it'll work in things like if you play the uh, famous uh, Rosanna shuffle, uh, you've got like a loud and a soft after that. And a lot, you know, whenever you play like ghost notes in a shuffle or any kind of funk thing, it's a fairly common thing to have to do to play 
uh, a backbeat with a ghost note immediately after. So this is a fantastic way of doing that with this pattern. Okay, so let's have a go with that. And I'm gonna put the bass drum in. Again, do the simplest thing you can with the bass drum, even just put the bass drum on the one of your bar at first, and then see what feels easy. And when I say what feels easy, you might have to play this pattern for three hours before you feel comfortable to vary the bass drum a bit. Take however long it takes. If, if it comes quickly, that's also good. Whatever happens is fine. So. Now, as you get into the pattern, and as you start feeling more relaxed with it, you can start speeding up a little bit, and you'll also notice that maybe some accents want to creep in on the hi-hat, and the certain things will feel natural to do. And uh, what I quite like doing is just letting myself play and notice what sort of accent patterns emerge. And at first it might be a bit cluttered or it might be a bit non-specific, it might be a bit variable, but in time I can start to pay attention and develop a more consistent approach to the way I accent the, these patterns. But let's speed this one up a little bit and see what we get. Cool, nice. I have to get a lot of attention onto my ghost notes to make sure that they sound nice and even. Um, the way I'm approaching my stroke on the snare is that I'm playing everything more or less in the center of the drum, but you can move the ghost notes a little bit to the side off center, which gives you a little bit more bounce and changes the sound of the ghost notes a little bit. Uh, try it out and see uh, what works for you. I mostly prefer to hit the backbeat, the accented note, in the center of the drum, you get the sort of clearest sound, in my opinion. Not just my opinion, anyway. You know, somebody else thought of everything first, didn't they? The final pattern is the one, again, I personally find most challenging, which is called the pull out, and my hand is going to play a soft note and then whack a loud note immediately afterwards. And this, again, is a very, ah, stop saying again. This is a very, challenging pattern to play. Um, I probably don't use it a lot very naturally, so it's, this is one for the, for the practicing, I suppose. Uh, you will hear this being used in sort of James Brown grooves and all that sort of funky stuff, where you might get the sort of chattery snare drum, and you might have um, a, a ghost note followed by the, the backbeat snare followed by another ghost note even. So uh, getting the hang of these exercises can really help you to develop that kind of stuff if you're interested. So. Let's try this one out. Overlapping diddles. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. Now, I can't make that as fast as the other ones, so I'm gonna just work on it at a tempo that I feel comfortable, but you know, once, once I've worked on it at a slow speed that I can really focus on, it's always good to speed up a little bit and try and push the envelope, shall we say. Ah, am I even doing it correctly? Let's see. I'm only a bit, I'm a bit variable with that, so maybe that's a bit too fast for me. Let's slow it down a little bit. Hmm, tricky. I'm gonna speed it up again though anyway, what the hell.
Ah, my mileage is varying on that one. Anyway, okay, what the hell? I'll throw this out there anyway. I've got nothing to prove. Um, but that's that, really. That's your how to use paradiddles to improve your ghost note playing. Um, have a go, see what happens, and see if that helps you, uh, and gives you some idea that will help you to improve your ghost note playing. As I say, the ghost notes are possibly one of the most important facets of getting decent rock, pop, blues, whatever style of drumming you want to play, funk, obviously. Um, ghost notes are very important, and uh, learning these paradiddles can be super fun to do. I'm going to go away now and practice my final paradiddle, my overlapping diddles, and see if I can get the speed up on that one a little bit. And thank you very much for watching this, but I think you can go off and practice too.